Hey y'all, welcome back to our channel. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. I am Tracy and I'm the keeper of the home here at 40 Farms. And today's video, I wanna tell you how I spend some of my winter months uh, planning our garden. Um, this helps me make it through the winter time because I'm not a winter person. I don't like the cold and I like if I'm stuck inside, I've got to be doing something. So one thing I do is I take advantage of that time, that cold time that you can't get outside and play and do things and, and work outside. I will supplement that time focusing my mind on outdoor things. Uh, that just helps me make it through the winter. Uh, I like sitting by the fireplace with an afghan over me and just being all cuddly and snuggly and warm and having all of my uh, garden seed catalogs and maybe like some books and stuff on gardening or gardens and I've got some books on um, flowers, flower beds. So I, I spend a lot of my winter months prepping and planning. So if that interests y'all today, just stick around with me and we will talk about that today. The first thing I do when I'm planning my garden or flower beds or anything like that or coming up with ideas is I will gather like notebook, pens, pencils, um, all of my garden seed catalogs, um, and, and just find a comfy spot in the house somewhere and sit down and start going through my mind envisioning what I want. Now, since we do this every year, my plans might change where I'm going to put something or what I'm going to grow, how much I'm going to grow, depending on our needs, or if this is the first time that you've never had a garden before and you decide, you know what, I think I want to try my hand at putting in a garden starting a garden, whatever. Um, I, I can help you get started with that. Everybody has to start somewhere. Okay, so it, let's go from the beginning. <clears throat> if you've decided that you want to start a garden and this is your first time, of course you're going to need to start planning. You're gonna have to pick a spot and pick a spot in your area that you think that has good soil. Um, it, uh, depending on your area, where you live. Um, check with your uh, county extension office and uh, find out in your area what kind of soils you have, what nutrients for that area should be in your soil. This is something else to consider. It's not a lot of science, but it is something to consider because if you don't have the right kind of soil, you're probably not gonna be able to grow certain things. You may not be able to grow anything. Uh, my parents have tried several times to grow a garden and it they just, where they're at on their property, they just do not have a proper spot. It's more like red clay dirt. And if, if you do not have ample soil, it, right in your area on your acreage or wherever you live your property <coughs> excuse me you might want to consider uh composting bringing in materials like some kind of compost maybe having a load of dirt delivered if you can do it uh if your budget allows you um you might have to lime a little bit first. Uh, you might have to fertilize a little bit first. Talk with your county extension office and maybe take a soil sample to your county extension office and they can test it for you. Uh, they do soil testing all the time and I believe it's free. Um, they can tell you what your soil is lacking if you need to add something to it. If it's good soil, and they're like, hey, you know, dig it up. Get you a little plot out there, dig it up, you're good to go. They'll be able to tell you. I wouldn't want you to get into this and something happened and you not have a successful year and then you're sitting back wondering, what happened? I did everything right. Sometimes it starts with the soil and where you decide to plant. Um, picking a spot. You're gonna need an area like particularly no flooding areas. That makes common sense. Um, in our area, we have a spot where 
we do have like a runoff, like our house is kind of like up on a hill and we do have like a runoff across our driveway going down. Everything just kind of slopes down this way. Um, and in one spot of our garden, we do have an area that washes and it kind of creates a ditch. Look like Looks like the parting of the Red Sea. And I show this in one of my videos coming up uh, after what it looks like after we planted some stuff and a good rain came through there and it just looks like whoosh, just like a little ditch and it's in the same area every year it's just a runoff spot so we used to run our garden this away our rows going this away now we run our rows going this away back and forth now I don't know which I mean north south east or west it just depends on where our garden spot's sitting i don't know i don't know directions y'all i'm not good with that um i am uh directionally dysfunctional okay so i just know we used to do it this way now we do it this way okay so and when when people were uh disking up <clears throat> or plowing or tilling you're, you're kind of like trying to hold the tiller this away, you know, and it was getting rough. So we're like, hey, we need to come up with something different. So even though we might be going uphill just a little bit, when you're behind a tiller, that the tines on your tiller is going to walk anyway. And it's going to help you get up the hill. Now, when you're going downhill, you better hang on, Sally, because this going to take you for a ride. But it's okay. You can control it. Um, it's not that bad, though. <clears throat> um so you'll want to pick a spot that is ideal that's not going to flood even if it has a little bit of a runoff pay attention what you can also do is plan something that may need um more water plan it more towards the going down the hill if that makes sense things up this way are going to get drier quicker because the water the the wetness is going to seep down this away so maybe something that doesn't require a lot of water put it on this end okay also think about your um time your hours of sunlight uh is it going to be in the sun all day is it do you have shade um of course your garden is going to need sunshine and rain okay so you don't want to plant underneath a bunch of shade trees okay um think about where you're going to put your plot um uh water situations sun situations and the kind of soil that you've got have it tested Okay, now the next thing that you're going to do is um, have someone to disc it up. We're just fortunate enough. We have our own tractor. We have a plow and we have a disc. So my, my um, uh, husband will disc up my garden for me. If he's not at home when it's time to do this, uh, one of our other sons will do it. Um, uh, you can, uh, pro you might can find somebody a farmer that has a tractor with a plow and a disc close to your area uh, that may live around you and see maybe bartering or a small fee if they will come and disc up your garden for you plan how big you want it um i we used to have whoo y'all we used to have a very big garden when we started out i was younger then i could handle more not so much now and and not with health issues we've had to downsize but in one of my videos i show you where our how big our garden used to be um i, I, I may be wrong but i want to say like the rose might have been 75 foot to 100 foot long i'm not sure somewhere in that vicinity um i'm, I'm not good i'm like metrically dysfunctional too so i'm like over there by that tree right there that that's about how far apart from me to that tree that's that's how far my metric system goes okay my yardage whatever so I, we had long rows and we had wide garden um on our blog on our uh, gardening page you'll see how big our garden was at one time and if i could grow it i would grow it whether we needed it or not some years i just wanted to throw seeds out there and just experiment and see what I could grow, and see if we liked it, tried new foods. Some things we liked, some things we didn't. Some things I could grow, 
in our soil, some things I, we couldn't grow. I can't grow carrots for the life of me. Don't ask. I don't know if it's our soil. I don't know if it's just me doing something wrong. I cannot grow carrots. One of these days, I'm going to master growing carrots, okay? It's on my bucket list. I will not be defeated. Not today, Satan. Um, so, I, you plan out where you're going to have one, okay? And see if somebody can come disc it up, barter with them. Say, hey, you know, I'll exchange work. Yeah, I wish we could go back to the bartering days. Exchange things. In, instead of all time having to pay for something. If you've got a talent, in, I'm just going to throw this in for free. I'm chasing a rabbit. If you've got a talent for something, find somebody else that's got a talent. Maybe y'all can swap and do something for each other. Uh, services. Uh, if somebody needs some plumbing done, you're an electrician, swap services. I mean, I wish we could get back to the prairie days, what pioneer days when people just used to barter. You know how like Ma and Pop, Ma Ingalls used to go in there and take her eggs in and get money for her eggs and then that's how she bought things with. I mean, I wish we could get back to that. Pay Doc, Doc Baker with chickens. I mean, that man never went hungry. I don't know how he stayed slim and trim all the time. Everybody was giving him food to pay for his medical services. I, I wish we could get back to that. That's free. Um, okay, let's see. Then, um, if you're lucky enough to have to uh, to get a tractor or a disc and a plow, you're going to need that. You're going to need. Um, I'm saying you're gonna you're gonna need it. But you know what? There is no till methods in a garden, and there's tilling methods. I prefer a tilled garden because I like that fresh turned dirt look. I don't like weeds in my garden. I cannot stand weeds. I want my rows to look just perfect. My ideal garden. No weeds, just things just flourishing and growing and looking heavenly and just can't wait. Getting perfect sunshine, the right amount of water. Yeah, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. But I remember one year just we would keep the garden tilled and hoed. We stayed up on everything, and I was so pleased with that garden that year. It, through the whole growing season, from the time we dissed to the time we brought in the last, I think, pumpkin that year in the fall, my garden stayed free of weeds and everything. It's because we put a lot of work and sweat into it, a lot of labor. Um... I have a tiller, and it it just absolutely just knocks me around. So I've had to like get other people to kind of disc for me sometimes, and I just love that fresh turned dirt. And it takes care of the weeds; it gets the weeds out. If you can find a tiller, um, if if you know somebody that has one, maybe you can borrow it. Switch services, maybe. Okay, hey, I'll watch your kids if your husband will let me use his tiller. Y'all go out to eat. Barter, y'all, if you can. Um, you can check into uh, farm supply places like an agri-center or a, a feed supply store. Um, I don't know if Lowe's does. I, some places you can check and see if they rent some. Maybe you can rent one for a couple of days. Get your work done in that couple of days. Take it back. Your, your your options are open. You don't have to go out and spend this mega thousands of dollars buying you one. Borrow one or rent one. See if somebody can come do it for you, okay? So then what we will do is it depends on when we did it last as to when we need to fertilize and lime. Um, our, our soil every so many years it may be three, two or three years, we will lime. And then um, at least every year, we will fertilize when we um, disc or plow and, and start getting it ready before I plant the seeds. Or we will fertilize as we plant. Just depends on what we get around to. And it depends on the weather, too. Um, sometimes the weather, especially in the early spring in the south, it's like rain, 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 rain. So it's like, am I going to get to plant today? Am I going to get to plow today? Do not try to plow, disc, uh, till when it 
at right after it has got done raining. That's just common sense. You're going to get stuck and you're going to get bogged down. Don't do that. You Then you got to allow time to dry. If you plant it just right, you can lime and fertilize, disc, lime and fertilize, and then catch a rain. If you can lime and fertilize before a rainfall, you're going to have to play weatherman. You're going to have to keep your eye on the weather if you're going to have a garden. This is this is a no-brainer, okay? So if you can catch a rain, lime or fertilize before that rain, then it'll just, when it rains, it'll soak all those nutrients into the soil. Um, so then um, I like to take... During the winter time, I like to take my, my pen and piece of paper and my catalogs and I'll draw off my garden and I will start planting my rows and I'll start planning what I'm going to plant, where I'm going to put it, and and how many plants. I'm just, I like a diagram, y'all. I am a on paper person. I'm a visual person. I got to see the picture, okay? So I draw pictures. Um, and don't throw that piece of paper away after you get done planting it because after you plant, you're going to need to remember where you put everything. That's why I keep my pieces of paper. Um, one year, I couldn't remember what I planted right here, and I'm like, well, we'll see when it comes up. Um, so I will, I'll just start planting my garden and uh, experiment. Um, you can um, figure out what you want to plant. I, if you just want to experiment, that's okay. If you just want to stick with the staples that you know your family is going to eat, that's fine. I had enough room to play around. I could experiment. If you don't have enough room, then you may just have to stick to the staples and grow only what you can. There's different ways that people plant in their garden. I've seen some people use the square block method. Uh, they'll, they'll get like a... Um, what do you call it? Raised bed looking or planks, boards, whatever, concrete blocks. And they'll block off squares. This little cube or square will be lettuces. Uh, this little cube will be um, carrots. This little cube will be something else. And they just do like this called square foot gardening, okay? We, I've tried that. I've done container gardening. I've done the raised beds. I, I had good luck. I had good luck that year doing some lettuces and some spinach, um, and just play around with those. And then I, I just got to the point where I was like, you know, it's a lot of trouble having to weed in between these things and having so many, uh, so many different walkways. I felt like it was wasted space. So I did away with those. Now, if it's something delicate like herbs or lettuces or something like that, I would do raised beds. Some things do better in raised beds than they do just putting your seeds in the hard ground, okay? Uh, radishes, anything that's little bitty, bitty, bitty seeds, carrots, radishes, um, any of your greens, uh, like spinach, rape, kale, um, in your lettuce families, um, little tiny, teeny seeds, you might want to do raised beds. Hard seeds, big seeds like corn and green beans, you you can do those in a row and put those in the ground. Uh, we'll get into different kind of different kinds of gardening too, um, not just in a in the in the uh, ground and out in the yard somewhere on your property. Um, we do we went back to the row gardening. Okay, um, if it's anything that had teeny tiny seeds, I would use like a container. I took some old barrels and cut them in half and uh, filled them up with topsoil. And I tried, I did some lettuces and some radishes. Um, and I used those at the end of some rows. And then I utilized the rest of my rows for growing things that was harder seeds. After so many years of growing a garden, you'll know what you can do and what you can't do. You'll know what you can try, what you can't try. You'll know, um, hey, you know what? I think I've got room at the end of this row. Let me try. Let me put something here. And I did that one year. At the end of our rows, I would have some other kind of plant. I might have a squash plant or a zucchini plant or a tomato plant at the end of a bean row, at the end of a, a, a pea row, a potato row. Play around. Um, 
it, uh, you can design a garden to make it look fancy if you want to. Um, but we went back to the row method. So then I will plan what I need for something that that I'm growing. Uh, my tomato plants. A lot of people will just do like a staking method and use wooden sticks or um, metal cages, the round uh, cages that, that goes down into a cone, or they'll make their own cages. I just found something that was easier for us and I was able to utilize more garden space and I have a, a visual video that I'm going to put up where I take you on a tour of our garden. Um, but this is just making it, this is just the planning stage. But you're still going to need to add this into your planning because you may have to go get materials and, and just save them up and put them somewhere. Use this time to start stocking up on what you need. Um, we started using cattle panels or fencing and T posts to stake my tomatoes. And what I do is I will, we will put the T post up and the cattle panel up and make a fence and I'm able to grow tomato plants on this side and this side. They grow together and I'll just take my twine or my, my string and I will tie up my tomatoes to the fence. So instead of one row of 25 tomato plants up against this fence, I got one side of 25, one side of 25. I got 50 tomato plants in one row. I've utilized my space. I was able to use this space for something else and play around with something else. So you can use dog fencing, you can use goat fencing, you can use cattle panels, um, t post you can even, if you've got wood, um, you can make your own fence. I'm not saying you gotta go buy t post um, So that's just how we do our tomato plants now, and it's so much easier. We, we first started using the um, metal cages that you can get from like tractor supply and farm supply stores, but we had a storm come through one year and it just blew everything down, broke a lot of cages, um, and I mean, just bent them. And I'm like, well, this is not going to work. So the fencing and the cattle panels was stronger to withstand the winds. Um, plus, when you do the cones like that, um, the cages, you have to space them out further. So see, I had wasted space. Now I'm condensing and I'm like this, and I got that space over here to do something else with. Uh, let's say we do green beans up a fence. I do, um, I don't do bush beans, I do vine beans. So I will take one fence again, and I will, up against that fence, I will make a row going up against that fence, and I'll plant seeds going down this way. On the other side of that fence, I'll go down, and I'll make a row of green beans going that way. My green bean vines are growing up the fence, lapping over. I've got one row, one long row, but I've got really two rows, but it's just taking up one row space if that makes sense. So I utilized my garden space. Now corn, you're just gonna have to do rows with your corn, okay? And be sure that when you plant, that you remember you're gonna need a space in between for a walkway and maybe a tiller space to get through with a few extra inches on the side because you don't want it so tight when you run your tiller through there that you're chopping down something on your row. I have chopped down, I don't know how many corn stems coming up. And I'm like, ah, that, there went a corn stalk because I got too close. Or or getting a vine caught in, caught in the tiller tines. So that's aggravating. So remember that when you plant something in a row, skip over us a tiller width, and then start your next row, skip over a tiller width, start your next row. Draw this on your paper, like make your row, write out what you're gonna plant. Skip a spot, make a row, write on it what you're gonna plant. Skip a spot, draw you a diagram, okay? That's what I like to do. And then I will um, just look through seed catalogs. I don't know, y'all. There's just something comforting about looking through seed catalogs. I look at the tomatoes and see if there's something different we want to try. I look at the different green bean seeds. I look at... Um, 
the different corn seeds. You know, is there anything we want to try different? We have tried different things, but we've narrowed it down to what we like the most because we've been doing this for so long. Um, let's see. Just look through seed catalogs to start planning. Start saving up what you might need to buy. You're going to need a hoe. You're going to need a shovel. Um, you're going to need fertilizer. Um, I use two different kind of fertilizers in the garden. One is for things that are going to grow big and tall and produce heavy, thick stalks, um, such as corn. Uh, and green, if it's going to stay green a lot, uh, I will use like triple 15. That is 15 nitrogen, 15 phosphorus, and 15 potassium. The letter K is potassium. Yes, so you've got your nitrogen, your phosphorus, and your potassium. And it's equal 15, 15, 15 ratio. Um, now, for something that's a little, that's going to be produ producing uh, fruits, or the vegetables on top of the ground. Uh, I use like a, a 10, 10, 12, 10, 10, something. It's, it's a different one. It's just a little less for more tender plants. Um, now, I do something different with my tomatoes, and I have a whole video on that. Growing tomatoes, I take you from planting the plants all through the season. It's, I think it's a couple of videos. I take you all through the growing stage all the way till they start dying out. Um, to, uh, to, to tell you maybe you can get a second crop before the first frost. I, I explain all that on the video. We're still just in the planning stages. Um, find out what grows good in your area. You may choose something and according to your area, it may not grow good. Um, know your zone. Know what zone you live in, what grows good in your zone. Get with your county extension office. They can help you with this. Uh, pay attention to the weather. You're going to have to become a weatherman, not predicting the weather, but at least keeping an eye on it. I might purchase a farmer's almanac um, book in uh, uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, um, Tractor Supply, in, you can order one offline, get one for that year. They have the estimated first frost dates, they have the estimated, um, estimated rainfall, um, how the seasons are going to go, uh, the last frost date. Um, it's good to, to keep up with the weather. Um, Let's see, other things you might need is, um, of course, a hoe and a shovel, gloves, fertilizer, um, your equipment, uh, some, some string, uh, some, um, uh, hay bale twine. If, 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 uh, you, you, um, grow, uh, harvest your own hay, uh, you can use the, the twine from the hay bales to tie up your tomato plants. Um, it, you have your own decision what you want to do as far as fungicides and herbicides. It, some people like chemical sprays to kill bugs and weeds. Some people do not. That is totally up to your option. You will need to see what suits you best. Uh, it depends on how aggravating a certain Insect is in our garden, and I've tried everything else naturally, and it just won't get rid of it, then I will have to resort to something stronger before it eats my crop down, okay? Uh, hornworms is the worst for tomatoes. Um, and then you've got like on your squash and zucchini, of course, you're going to have squash bugs. Those things are notorious. Oh, um, I've tried everything. Look into your different options as far as fungicides and herbicides, um, bug killers, whatever you want to call it, insecticides. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking All the sides. Look into those. I've used diatomaceous earth. I've used seven dust powder. I've used a, a chemical spray. When I use a chemical spray and I, I bring, I pick our stuff and I bring it in, I make sure I wash it in a solution of a little bit of Dawn dish soap and vinegar. That breaks the chemical sprays 
off of your vegetables. Soak them really good, wash them really good, rinse them really good, and then set them on the counter, let them dry. And I, I know then it is safe to eat. Um, it, you, just, your options. It's your garden. You make the decisions what you want to use. You make the decision whether or not you want to till and no till. I don't know if I explained the difference between that. Not only do I like the fresh turned dirt look and the clean cleanliness, no weeds, it helps to aerate the soil better. Uh, I, and when we're in our garden, I don't see a lot of worms to help aerate the soil. Um, so I kind of have to help my soil out a little bit and aerate it a little bit. Roots thrive not just on water, but uh, nutrients in the soil and air, oxygen in the soil. They ha the roots have to be able to spread. And when you put, when you oxygenize your garden and you till and you help aerate the soil and get the oxygen flowing, your roots are going to spread and you're going to create the bigger the roots, the stronger the plant. Remember that. The bigger the root, the healthier the roots, the stronger the plant can survive. Okay? Corn. You're going to need a good foundation, a good root system to grow that big, tall stalk that's over my head and, you know, to withstand winds and storms. Tomatoes, you're going to need a good, healthy root system. And I explain this in my tomato videos, growing tomato videos. Um, I show you, I take you on a tour of our garden. Um, just, um, it's your garden. Know what you want to do. Don't compare yourself to what other people do. You can ask questions, take some of their advice, try it. If it doesn't work, try something else, okay? Um, it, only you know what's going to work for your area, okay? Um, you go by your convictions. You know, don't let somebody put you down if you want to use a chemical, a chemical insecticide. Um, try different options. Like I said, the diatomaceous earth, you can get it at a feed supply store. Um, it, it's, um, it's also used as a dewormer. To be honest with you, it's used as a dewormer um, on, on um, livestock. Um, squash bugs. I have to use, I have to, at the beginning, it's okay. But when they start hatching and eating on the plants, then I have to start getting a little stronger. And then I will have to spray them. But I make sure we wear gloves. I make sure that when we bring it in, we wash everything and get all that off. Um, just go by your own convictions. So if there's, this is the time to start planning purchasing what you need, um, saving up for maybe something that you want, like a tiller that you've been wanting to buy, um, and and planning and, and just playing around and figuring out, hey, well, I want to put this here. I want to put this here. Another thing that if you do this one year and then the next year when you get ready to plan your garden, you're going to have to rotate. Uh, rotational gardening. The reason for this is Peas puts off nitrogen in the soil, okay? So the next year, plant something in that spot that needs the nitrogen, okay? Rotate, put your peas somewhere else. Eventually, you'll get the nitrogen built up in your soil that you need. Um, uh, what is another one? What is another one? Uh, tomatoes, you will need to rotate them every year where you plant them because if your tomato plants wind up getting blight or some kind of fungus or some kind of uh, disease that tomatoes get, powdery mildew, you will need to, after those plants die out, remove them completely from the garden, take them off somewhere and burn them to get rid of that fungus. You don't want to keep that fungus in your soil. Get rid of it. Then you'll want to start kind of conditioning that soil and cleaning it, purifying it per se, with fertilizer uh, and and some other things, uh, a fungicide, uh, and getting it ready for what you're going to plant next. 
plant your tomato plants somewhere else because if you plant them right back in that spot and you have it conditioned and cleaned up and purified that soil, you might wind up getting the same fungus and the same disease on those tomato plants. So rotate, uh, gardening, um, rotation, whatever, rotate, rotate where you're going to plant your stuff, okay? Um, let's see. You'll need to start this in the early spring, like I said, after the rains. I let it dry a little bit, then start tilling and gardening. You can actually get, I'm going to throw this in for free, you can actually plan a second season in your garden. Some things can grow, you can grow again in the fall. You might can get two seasons out of your garden besides just one. Any of your cool crops like broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, all of your greens, radishes, um, lettuces, your cool crops, Brussels sprouts, I think is a cool crop, cabbages, you can actually, if you time it just right and according to your area, your county extension office can help you with this. And they'll have books in there too of planning times, planning seasons, what grows in this season, what grows better in this season. If you can catch your second season, you can harvest a little cold crop things before the first frost in your fall season, okay? Sometimes our first frosts haven't came till November, okay? Sometimes we've had early frosts. This is where keeping up with your weather is going to come in handy, okay, during the gardening season. Um, some cold things you might can get a second chance at. If they didn't do good in the, in the early part of the spring, early spring, try it again before fall. Know when something is going to be harvested from the time you plant it, germination, growing, and the day of harvest. And a lot of times on your seed packet, it will tell you that. Um, it'll tell you so many, 72 days to harvest. That's from the time you planted the seed, provided it's had ample nutrition, sunlight, water, uh, everything that it needs. You should be harvesting that, that particular item, produce, in 72 days. Keep an eye on it. Sometimes it may be before that. It just depends on how much your the weather in your area helped your garden to grow so look at your seed packets and then some people will actually um what i have done before is i will try you can you can try this you can try to start in the early spring growing your early crops your cool crops letting them Hurry up, go through their process, grow, and you harvest them. Then pick something that you can grow next in that spot right after that crop is finished. Does that make sense? Let me think of, of one. Let's say if you catch it early enough and you do like broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage, and they make it through a frost or something like that. Let's say you planted them really early and then you got a frost coming and they survive. I'll get to covering things in a minute, protecting your, your garden. Um, and let's say they're going to be done and harvested uh, like in April, early May. Well, May is a good time in our area to start planting the harder bean, the harder seeds like corn, beans, peas, okay? So I can utilize space in my garden, plant this little crop, it's growing season, get it over and done with, get it out of the garden, compost those plants. You can compost some of your plants vines, stalks, and things, if they do not have some kind of fungicide or some kind of disease like tomato plants get. Tomato plants, you're probably, if, if they're not diseased or a fungus or something, you can compost those. You can throw them over in a compost pile. You can le actually leave them out in the garden, let them die out and dry out, and then disc your garden, uh, let them stay there all winter, 
and and um, compost in your garden, disc them up, find them up, chop them up during your next plowing season. We've done that, and it just acted as compost. But if they have got a fungus or a disease on them, you cannot. You have to get them out of your soil, and do away with them, and burn them. Uh, our broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage, if they're not diseased or some kind of fungus, you throw them in a compost pile. Okay, uh, let that guard, let that little season get over and done with. Clean your soil up, teal, uh, fertilize a little bit if you want to. Then plants, utilize that spot and plant something else. Utilize your time in your garden and your space. Try to get a second season out of something. Um, when something, like let's say you've planted something in May and it's a harder kind of plant and it may die out before your fall season, Try to get that out of your garden. Plant something else that can be harvested before the first frost. Or if you've got protect, let me let me get to this, and then it'll help. If you've got help, you plan. If you've got something that is going to be running into your first frost in the fall, you might want to start thinking about cover up options. There's all different kinds of cover up options. If they're small enough plants, you can get out there and throw a Walmart sack over them and tie them up just a little bit at the stem. Don't crush your plant, but just kind of, you know, um, cover up some things, a strong plant with just a little light layer of hay, just something to keep the frost from settling on your plant and killing it. Um, if it's bigger plants and they're already up to here, you may have to look into like cover crops, uh, sheets of plastic. Uh, Y'all, I've got out there one night before bedtime and taken bed sheets and covered broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage. Y'all, I had 50 broccoli. I had 50 cauliflower. I had 50 cabbage heads, cabbage plants. That's 150 plants I did not want to lose. I took some bed sheets out of the house. It was an unexpected frost. I took some bed sheets out of the house and I covered up those plants. And the next morning I went out and I was afraid to peek and they were just fine. I didn't like suffocate them. I lightly placed it on top where it wasn't heavy and pulled the plant down. Um, and they made it. I saved 150 plants from an unexpected frost. I did not want to lose those. Um, last year, year before last, I think we did a light uh, dusting of hay. Just something to keep the frost crystals, ice crystals off of your plants so it doesn't kill them and harm them. Freeze, okay? A freeze is going to take your plants you better cover them. Pay attention to the weather, okay? So, this is where you can get in a fall crop. If you've got something that is done and over with, it's done producing by maybe late July, early August, try pumpkins. Pumpkins, you know, you harvest in the fall. So, pay attention to your days to harvest on your seed packet. Then get a plan going. All right, I've got these three seeds here. This one's going to germinate and be done quicker than these. I don't have to plant this one until this one's done. Okay, right, let's do this. Plan your garden, y'all. That's why you got that pen and that piece of paper. Um, draw, draw your second garden, like for the fall. Uh, draw, get another piece of paper and plan out your second one. In the, in the hottest part of the summer, sometimes things are done and over with. And then you can disc that up, till it up, get it out, plant something that's going to harvest in the fall. Okay? Pumpkins is a good one. I've done that. Utilize and plan. Pay attention to your weather. Get the equipment that you need. Start saving up. Start thinking about what you're going to have to have. This is all the aspects of planting a garden. And by the time you get done with all this, y'all, it'll be February and March before you know it. And you're like, whoa, where did the winter go? This, this is what I like to do during the winter. It brings me comfort because it helps me get through that cold season because I'm seeing all these nice green lush plants and flowers. I will do this with flower beds sometimes too. I'll, I'll figure out what I want to do with my flower beds and what we're going to need to freshen them up come springtime. Um, my husband loves his rose bushes and he he's the rose 
king, okay? He loves cutting me fresh flowers from our, our flower beds and bringing it to me. I like wildflowers. I like dandelions. They don't bother me. I like wildflowers. I like black-eyed Susans. I like daisies. I like any kind of flower. It's, it's pretty. My, I will have like some weeds coming up in our garden and they got these little teeny tiny little purple little flowers on them. My granddaughters will get out there and take their little tiny fingers and pick them flowers from me and bring them to me. And y'all, I find a little bitty cup to put them in and put them on the table with some water. I don't care if it's little bitty or if it's big. I love flowers. Um, if it's a pretty weed, they'll bring it to me. I like it if, you know, if it's pretty. Um, this will help you make it through the winter time and plan things and get you started for your sp early spring garden. Uh, some zones you can start in February. Oh, let's get to this. Um, oh, I don't know why I hadn't talked about this yet, y'all. Um, a greenhouse. Um, if you, some way, if you can, if you've got, you can start seeds indoors. My mother-in-law started a lot of her seeds indoors. This is how you can get through the winter time is give your seeds and things uh, a jump start. She would start, you can go buy, let me, let me say this. You can go buy plants to plant in the garden or you can start from your own seeds, okay? I've done both. Tomato plants, I have to go buy them. I cannot grow a tomato plant from seed. I take that back. One year, I started all of my seeds in a garden shed that we have. And I do believe I had 10 tomato plants that actually grew into a plant that I was able to transplant. Research on starting seeds start starting plants from seeds. Research it. My husband went and bought me some of those, um, it's, it's, uh, seed flats that's got the cell pockets in them. You can order some that's already got the little, um, dirt, pallets pellets in them and all you do is you just drop the the dirt pellet into the sit the sails and put water in there and it'll automatically puff up and create your dirt it's already got the fertilizer the nutrients in it that it needs then all you have to do is just make a little hole in each one and drop a two, two or three seeds in there and then put it in your greenhouse you can makeshift a greenhouse y'all you can do this inside um, inside on your house on a, on a, some shelves, um, start some seeds up. Uh, my, my mother-in-law would have styrofoam cups, should have, um, red solo cups, should be growing tomato plants in. Some would do good, some wouldn't, but y'all, it wasn't for the sake of not trying. So I did this one year. I tried growing some inside in cups. Didn't work. Uh, then my husband bought me the, uh, little seed sales and it was, it just came, you can buy them at Lowe's y'all. You can buy the whole kit, but it's just the tray and it's like a self watering system. You'll see what I'm talking about. You put the water in the bottom and the plants gathers the water that it needs. Um, uh, the, and the little uh, dirt pellets that you put in there. Now, you, some may come with seeds. Some you may just go buy to the section, go to the section where all the seed packets are and go pick out a bunch of seeds. Just try and play and experiment, y'all. Get back to biology class. I loved biology in school. I guess it's because it was preparing me for gardening someday. I loved biology, studying plants and stuff. And how to grow things, um, and I guess that was just starting me on my journey. I don't know, but it interests me. So let's get back to the biology classroom and see what we can grow. Play with your food. Like I said in my last video, I know they told us all of our life, don't play with your food, but I'm telling you, it's okay to play with your food. Uh, experiment, plan, um, something else you can try. Oh, I have one of these. Um, 
my husband knows I just love growing stuff indoors, okay? Uh, the last time I tried to grow things in our garden shed, it just wasn't getting the light that it needed because I had one little window and I had all these shelves and I'd have to go out there every day and rotate, you know, the thing. And I'm like, you know, this is... So he's like, okay, let's come up with something else. He knows I love to just grow things and play with things. So one year for my birthday, he got me an Aero Garden. A-E-R-O Garden. G-A-R-D-E-N. Y'all look it up. It's a hydroponics machine. And you can get them small. You can get them industrial size, y'all. You can get them kitchen size. Um, I have a tabletop one. And, oh, y'all, I play with this thing. I grow lettuce. I quit trying to grow lettuce outside um, because I didn't like it being out in the elements and in the hard ground. So I'm like, I'm going to start doing lettuce in my arrow garden. And y'all, it's so fun. I got the one that has the little six, um, six holes, the six cell pockets for the seed pods. And I will put the pods in there. I'll put my seeds in there. And I, I watch them every single day just grow. It's like they grow overnight. They have their own LED lighting up here. And everything's adjustable. The kit comes with its own fertilizer that you put in the water. And you can pick your own seeds or you can buy uh, pods that already have the seeds in them. I do either or. I like playing with things and I grow my own stuff. So, I grow lettuce and herbs in my arrow garden. I cannot grow herbs out in my garden for some reason. I can grow anything else. But carrots and herbs, carrots and herbs, I cannot do herbs. I, I don't know what it is about my herbs being outside. I cannot do it. So I grow, my favorite herbs is basil and uh, the girls love mint. They like taking those mint leaves and just plucking them off and eating them. Uh, let's see. I love basil. I love putting fresh basil on top of dishes and in my spaghetti sauce and my, my pizza sauce. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's another herb that is my favorite. I can't think of it off the top of my hand. Thyme, rosemary. That is my favorite herbs to grow. I love the smell of rosemary. It's quick to harvest. And then I, after I've got some herbs that, that grow, I'll put them in some different pots. You don't leave them in the arrow garden. You do transplant them. But in order to keep the aquaponics going, my husband bought me some self-watering potters. You put them in this, you transplant them in the soil, and then you keep water in the bottom of your planter, and it's got the string that draws the water up to the soil as it needs it. it takes its own drink of water. Oh, it's a nice system. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I have in one of my videos, I think I got a snapshot of it, and I showed a little clip of it, and um, I will link it down below their website to where you can go check it out, and I might do a video on that, uh, showing you my arrow garden, how I plant things in there. I'll, I'll write that down. That'll be a video for when I get back home. I will um, show you my arrow garden, because it's going to be time when I get back home to plant me something else. I plant lettuce in there. I'll plant all different kinds of lettuces, arugula, um, and we will actually have a fresh salad just by going over there when they get to a certain height, cutting it off, trimming it off, and y'all, it just keeps regrowing. A couple of days later, it starts growing some more. In about four or five days, I trim that thing again. I got a little bowl of salad. The granddaughters love it. I like, you know, do y'all want a salad to go with your lunch today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll go over there and they'll climb up on their little ladders and they'll watch me trim. We'll take it and we'll wash it. And then they'll chop it up and put it in their little bowl. And they'll, they'll make their own little salad. It's something that I love to just play around with. So when I get home, I'll do a video on that. And then I will show you during the growing season. I'll keep it going and show you the progress. And then how I transplant them. I'll link 
their website in the description box below. And so you can check them out. It's a little investment, but y'all, for what I get out of it, I only purchased, he only, he only purchased the, the aquaponic system for me one time. It's well overpaid for itself because I've grown spinach. I've grown lettuce. I keep lettuce and herbs going. Um, it's helped me in my cooking, eating. I mean, go figure, it's paid for itself. I love it. Um, and I, I'm kind of like maybe in the future wanting a bigger system. I don't know. I, I just kind of upgrade a little bit. I'm going to throw that out there, sweetheart. But, you know, we may not have the room for it. Depends on, this is a tabletop one, so it's small. You can get uh, the next sizes, which may be like a um, shelf unit, maybe like a filing cabinet size. <clears throat> Different, different things. They even have vegetables that are designed to grow with the Aero Garden. Um, they've got like some bell peppers that grow with this system that is designed to grow, to stay sizable with this, this tabletop version. Uh, a miniature tomato plant. What is that called? There's two word, determinate. And interdeterminate. What? Oh, hey, know that when you go pick out your tomato plants, when you get ready to plant, and and if you want to grow from seed, know that tip right there. Whether or not it's a determinate or interdeterminate. I, off the top of my head, without looking it up, I cannot remember the difference between interdeterminate and determinate. One of them is going to grow into a big, tall plant. The other one is going to be a smallish bush plant. So when you're planting your garden, take that into consideration. Take into consideration how tall something's going to get, how big and bushy and round something's going to get, or if it's a vine, how far out it's going to spread. On your seed packet, it will tell you how far apart to space your seeds, okay? If you're growing something from a plant, like I buy my tomato plants, I space them about a foot apart. My broccoli, cauliflower, squash, zucchini. I grow zucchini and squash from seeds. But most of your bushy spreading out plants, you're going to need to put them a foot apart. Okay, so pay attention on your seed packets, the size something's going to get. But especially on tomatoes, pay attention, interdeterminate or determinate. And... Look up the definitions of those two. Off the top of my head, I can't remember which one's which without looking at it. But um, these are designed, the, these seeds that comes in a packet um, is the size that will grow with my arrow garden. In other words, I'm not going to have an eight-foot tomato plant trying to grow in my arrow garden, okay? They pick a t t tomato variety that's going to stay, that goes with that tabletop arrow garden. So I want to try some bell peppers and some onions too. I was supposed to have done that back there in the winter uh, last year, but I, I didn't get around to it. I was too busy having fun with the lettuces and the herbs. I was like, yeah, this is fun. So um, I love my arrow garden. So I'll do a video on that. But uh, I think we've about covered all the basics and the fundamentals of what you might need. Um, and to get you started, planning anyway and then anything else that you need to know y'all there's lot there's tons of information on the internet google it look it up youtube it plenty of gardeners out there uh you can type in how to grow squash and thousands of videos will come up but now everybody has their own system so what works for them may not work for you you can tweak and figure out what works for you and y'all don't if something doesn't work in your garden and it didn't grow or something happened, don't give up. Keep trying. Y'all, I keep trying to grow carrots. One of these days, I'm going to grow carrots, okay? I am bound to determine I'm going to grow some carrots. One of these days, I may be 80-something years old, but I can... 30 more years, I'll be able to cross it off my bucket list, okay? I'm bound and determined. I'm not going to let them get the best of me. Play around with your garden through the winter months. Plan. Save up. Some places will already start setting up their garden equipment like in January and February. 
getting ready for March planting season in some zones. So in January and February, start looking for your seed catalogs. Sign up to get some in the mail. Um, girlies, burpee. Um, there's another one that I get. A some baker seed supply. Um, y'all, there's tons of those out there. Get these, get these magazines and these catalogs and sit down and start planning. Grab your pen, piece of paper, plan where you want to put stuff. Figure out who you can be calling to barter for some services with. It's all in the planning, y'all. And see, I'm already getting excited about gardening season this year. And y'all, this is just November. I'm already thinking about garden season for the spring next year. But this helps me make it through the cold months. It gives me something to look forward to. Because you sit inside all winter long, you can get depressed. So stay busy, stay active, get your mind going and start planning all this stuff. Um, if you have any questions, just shoot me some, some um, questions in the comments below. And I will... Um, Put in the description box our blogs and you can go to our gardening page and it's all written out for you. Everything that I've talked about, if you'd rather read it, print it out, have it, do whatever you want to, have it on hand. You can go to our gardening page at the top of our blog on the header and look for the title gardening and click on that and it'll take you to our gardening page and it'll show you what how big our garden used to be and how we've downsized what we used to use, what we, what doesn't work for us anymore, um, what we plant, anything, your fertilizer. I'll, I'll talk you through the basics again, and you can read it. And like I said, you can print it out if you want to. Um, if you got any questions, just shoot me some questions in the comments below. I'll be glad to answer them. But just plan and play with your food, y'all, and have fun. And just try to grow a garden. Y'all, there's a lot of kids out there today that honestly does not know where our food comes from. Yes, they know you go to the grocery store and you buy food, but how it gets to the grocery store, they have no clue, y'all. Half kids out here do not even know where our meat comes from, y'all. And then when you tell them, they're like, eh, I've never eaten that. Okay, maybe sometimes you don't need to tell them. But if you start out a, ki out a kid young enough and they know where their food comes from, y'all, it's not so bad. Okay, I'm probably going to get blasted by PETA out there somewhere, but I'm sorry. Um, we know sustainable living, okay? We know where our food comes from. Okay, and no offense to vegetarians out there, no offense, but we like our meat and we know where it comes from, okay? It's time to get back to educating our children. Um, this is why FFA is still strong in our school system today. Support your local 4-H's, get your kids in 4-H and FFA. Y'all, they will learn a ton and they can learn to some areas of being sustainable because we may be seeing some tough times in the near future future. So being able to do some things for yourself and being able to provide for your family, get on it, okay? We're, we may have to rely on our own selves eventually and our self-sustainability. So research it. Maybe this might be an option that you might have to start looking into. For all, all of us that's already done it most all of our lives, y'all, I've been shelling peas and shucking corn and, and processing stuff since as far back as I can remember, six, seven years old. I thought my fingers would fall off from shelling butter beans and snapping beans and shucking corn. We'd go to bed exhausted some nights, but we had food to eat. We had food to eat. And this that was our sustainability. We barely had to buy anything from the grocery store except essentials that we didn't grow, okay? Or, or you know, hunt or whatever. Um, didn't make. We That was the only things we had to go buy. We had milk. My grandmother had a cow. We had uh, vegetables. We had uh, meats because my grandparents raised chickens. My grandmother was the chicken queen, and she would tell my pa I'm going to throw this in there, y'all. I just have to tell you a story. Uh, but she would tell my papa, okay, we need some chicken. Let's go let's have some chicken for lunch. Y'all, this ain't no lie. The chicken that we sat down and eat was just walking around out in that yard a few minutes ago. My grandmother would say, will you go get us a chicken? 
My papa would oblige. He'd go bring that chicken to my grandmother. I have set over a wash tub, and if if you don't like this part, don't listen. You might want to end the video right here, okay? So, this is old-timey stuff, and this is how we lived, and this is how the old-timers lived, y'all. They had their meat and their protein. So, I've set over a wash tub, and I've watched her pluck that chicken and scald that chicken, take it inside, cut it up, fry it up, and y'all, that was the best tasting chicken. Kentucky Fried Chicken ain't got nothing on my grandmother. No. We had fresh chicken. Okay? We would do fish that way. My grandpa, we had a lake out behind his house. We'd go fishing. We'd bring it inside. We would process it for sensitive ears. We processed it. And we would fry it up. Would have us a good old fish fry. So, y'all, we may have to get back to those days pretty soon if that's all I'm going to say right there. We may have to get back to those days. Start getting self-sustainable. Let's not rely on everybody else all the time. Things that you can't go get. Uh, I had chickens at one time. We raised chickens. I became the next chicken queen, okay? I took after my grandmother. Everything I do, I took after my grandparents, y'all. I am my grandmother's twin. My mama says, you are straight out from your from my mama, from your grandmother, from my mom. You're straight out, just about. Um, I did everything she does. I, I took on the chicken raisin and stuff. And we had fresh eggs. We never processed any of our own chickens because for some reason, the older I got, I didn't have the heart to. And, and I, we just didn't. I just used the eggs, okay? I let them live a full life on our farm and... They gave us eggs. So there you go. I don't, don't hate me. Haters don't hate me. Um, I, they had a full life on our farm and they gave us wonderful eggs. We raised ducks. I collected the duck eggs and I used those. They're higher in protein. Um, well, I, well, I even raised my husband some turkeys sometime, one time. Wild turkeys. We raised them. And we set them out. And they just, just all over the property. We let them remain wild all over the property. They eventually roamed off of the property. But that's okay. We enjoyed raising them. We enjoyed seeing them, uh, um, grow. Um, we have taken, uh, chicks chick eggs and incubated some and watch chicks come out of their shell. I have, I had a mother hen. You couldn't collect her eggs for nothing. So I'm like, okay, honey, I'll let you raise some. You, okay, you go right ahead. I'll let you have some. I'll just take these over here and I'll go raise some, okay? Mm, I let her be. She pecked me. She got a vein one time and I bled. I don't know how long. So, yeah, I, I, I just had to tell y'all this story. We did raise our own chickens and ducks and turkeys and they were awesome. And, um, when, when, maybe when we retire someday and we don't travel and stuff, I'm, I might get a few chickens just because I miss it. I miss those eggs. I don't miss buying them from the store. I tell you that. I like growing them or them, them growing them, them laying them and I eat them. Okay. We had eggs coming out our ears. Okay. So we're going to have to start depending on ourselves again for sustainability and do what we can. Okay. Research. If this is your first time, y'all have fun with it. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. You cannot just go out there, throw a seed, and expect it to work all by itself. It may it may grow and it may not, but y'all, you're going to have to put some labor into it. I pass by gardens all the time where I see, oh, they got a garden going. Good for them. And then about a month or two later, I'm seeing it all grown up with weeds they're not going to get anything, y'all. They've spent that money and they've they've spent that first part of their labor and sweat and tears and they're not going to get a thing because the weeds came in, have taken over and robbed all their soil nutrients. Weeds will rob your plants of the nutrients that's supposed to go to the plants. The weeds will get it all. You will not harvest anything, okay? 
you cannot just throw a seed out in your garden and be done with it and then expect to go out there and have a beautiful flourishing garden. It does not work that way. You've got to put in the time and the effort. You've got to stay consistent with it. Sometimes you're going to have to pray really hard for rain during drought seasons. Or that's another thing you're going to have to contemplate. If you get into a drought season, you're going to have to get water to your garden somehow. I just thought of this. I don't know why I didn't a while ago. Y'all, the water is going to be an essential part of your garden. If you're starting to go through a drought season and you know it's your drought season, or if you've gone, the weather's been kind of funny and you haven't had the amount of rainfall that you normally get in your area, you got to get some water to your garden, okay? My husband sets me up a sprinkler system. We use uh, tea posts, and we'll set a sprinkler on top and tie it on there. We'll get the, we'll drag the water hose out to the garden, and we'll water this area for a couple of hours. We'll move the tea post, or move the sprinkler, or the water hose. We'll water another area for a couple of hours. And we keep rotating our sprinkler system. Now, if you've got the hoses and you've got multiple sprinkler systems, you can you can water your whole garden at one time. Um, find the water system that works best for you. I know some people that will use rainwater uh, barrels. They'll they'll buy these barrels from somewhere, and they'll set up a rainwater system and collect rainwater. Put a, we've done this one year, put a spout in that rainwater barrel to where you can hook up a water hose and do a drip irrigation system. Take an old water hose, drill holes in it, and lay it out in your garden. Turn on the water hose, cap it off at the end, other end, and it'll drip. It, check into drip irrigation system. Check into uh, water sprinklers course water hoses and things like that you're gonna have to get some water to your garden <clears throat> during those times and during that season uh during the springtime be careful of how much water your garden is getting because it can flood it out it can wash seeds down your out of your garden um tomatoes Ooh, y'all, tomatoes are so sensitive. If they get too much water, that's where they, and the fruit, the fruit gets, the plant gets too much water, the fruit will burst and that will cause a split in your tomato. Then you're, you're susceptible for getting insects in there, uh, a blossom in rot, uh, different kinds of things. So I might be searching into something of uh, covering up my tomatoes, a cover system for my tomato, a hoop house is what it's called. Uh, you put some kind of like form of plastic over your tomato plants. Tomato plants are sensitive to a lot of above rain, above watering. Tomato plants are best watered below, like a drip irrigation system, or just watering the each individual plant with water. Um, so I may be checking into doing something different with my tomatoes next year, like some kind of cover over them to protect them from the above rain. So plan, figure out what you're going to need. Save up for what you're going to need. Start purchasing some things as soon as they start hitting the stores. Start saving up for these things. Get through this depressing downtime of winter and have fun and just sit down and plan and think about what you need. I hope if you give a garden, this is your first time, if you give it a go, I hope you have success with it. And please don't give up. You just may need to tweak something and you'll know better next year. Uh, if you're a seasonal gardener, I hope I've said something today that helps. If y'all have some ideas, drop me some ideas in the comments below. Um, I will, I like to learn. I like to find out new ways of doing things or easier ways of doing things. But happy gardening and happy planning during this winter season. And I will see y'all in the next video. And if you like this content and you like this channel, be sure to like and subscribe and help get the word out about our channel. Um, um, if you know some friends that, that you're like, hey, I know this chick that you might can learn something from, you know, pass my channel around, you know, word of mouth. Um, but y'all just have fun and we'll see you in the next video. Have a good day.